Chapter 8. The Community, Syap and other tall tales from the cult of the simulacrum. Yay! Let's create Doomsday together. Meet your greatest teacher, the Great Parasite. An important motif in this ebook is that a powerful spiritual adversary uncalling the Great Parasite challenges those of us open to the challenge, and what a challenge it is, of consciously evolving ourselves even under a barrage of slings and arrows in the seemingly suicidal circus of this life. Seen from this holistic angle, the Great Parasite, which, truth that, type stuck in the cult of duality routinely judges evil, is actually the head teacher of life's spiritual classroom. The Great Parasite is like an actor overplaying the part of a diabolical professor who brilliantly, even flamboyantly employs subterfuge, lies, psyops, conspiracy theories, false flags, gaslighting, propaganda, mind control, and just about anything else one can imagine to whip us pupils awake to three primary realizations essential to our graduating from this school of hard knocks. 1. We're not living in a real world but something like a simulation or, better yet, a dreamscape. 2. As perceivers, dreamers, of an observer-based fake reality, we're actually its creators, and 3. We're thus extraordinarily powerful and need to learn how to channel our dreaming power to create outcomes that we desire, instead of the nightmarish menu of horrors disingenuously trotted out by the histrionic Great Parasite as the only possibilities of this scripted reality. A crucial hallmark of the Great Parasite's evil genius is that, like Bruce Lee on a superhuman scale, it inevitably uses our own energy against us during combat. At least until we understand this self-defeating dynamic and, learning the life-changing lesson of how to say no without creating conflict, simply walk away. Lee also famously stated, what you're not changing, you're also choosing. This is one of the major takeaways from the types of non-violent resistance pioneered by the likes of Henry David Thoreau and Mahatma Gandhi. By removing one's supercharged emotional involvement in a battle of wills, it's possible to dissolve, and sometimes even resolve, the conflict without so much as a word. Disobedience, wrote Oscar Wilde, in the eyes of anyone who has read history, is man's original virtue. It is through disobedience that progress has been made. Sadly, the strategy of civil disobedience is hardly ever put into action in today's literally insane civilization because, you know, cults. Specifically, I'm referencing the twisted duality cult where everybody and their brother is a raging drama queen producing a lot of sound and fury over a lot of nothing. In this era when people are addicted to useless, soulless, generally spiteful activities such as doxing, debunking and exposing, Non-violence is like the old joke about Christianity, about which G.K. Chesterton once quipped. The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult, and left untried. The downside of, community. A highly energized drive common to most people is the desire for community, to be a member of a tribe, to live among kindred spirits, to experience belonging. While this may sound well and good and perfectly natural, I'd argue that the need for community isn't a universal drive and that, in fact, it's a sign of a lack of individuation, meaning, the need for community should grow less as we grow spiritually wiser and energetically more powerful.